itself on kind of the lay of the landscape of what's happening um, throughout, really kind of throughout Vermont, uh, as well as uh, kind of what the trends are in the country with things. So a lot of it's just been uh, research, but uh, and again, look forward to uh, helping you in any way I can and, and taking uh, the guidance of the executive committee as well as the business development um, committee to uh, keep me busy and, and keep me on my toes and, and try to stay ahead of uh, what we've got going and, and communicating that throughout uh, the duration. So. All right, thanks, Tim. Any, uh, any questions for Tim? All right, didn't think so. Thank, thank you very much. We, we appreciate you being here to help us along, Tim. Yes, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, moving along to uh, Treasurer's Report and Bills to Pay. L Lee, were you able to get in and you were able to see the balances and whatnot? Yeah. I was. So we've got um, not quite $9,300 in the bank right now. And it looks like checks cleared for um, for three of the bills that I think y'all authorized payment on the first time I attended a meeting. Um, I, I, I just got access um, today, so I'm, I'm not as prepared as perhaps you'd like me to be. Um, but I think Jeremy and I are going to probably sit soon and um, and turn over more of the sort of bill paying capacity. Is that right, Jeremy? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's it. I'm happy to entertain any questions. I probably don't know the answer, but I can get them for you. Good. Okay. So, so I'm going to, uh, yeah, we'll meet and I'll give you, I'll give you the checks. Um, That's yeah. And I'll make sure that you get the invoices and some envelopes and postage and the usual, usual stuff to yeah. get it out the door. Um, yeah. I expect you all saw my invoice for the two, um, the two, in, the two things that I paid for that were already authorized. I, I, nobody has any objections to um, me writing myself a check for those. Does that all look? Does that all look good? Okay. Um, I learned today from Rob Fish that the $100,000 grant that we received as part of the COVID funds was uh, the way I, I read it in the in the grant in the grant contract was that upon execution of the grant we would it would then be dispersed to us and of course I didn't look closely enough and it says upon um, upon signing the contract and submission of an invoice. So Rob Fish said, oh yeah, you have to submit an invoice for, you don't have to do anything. You just have to submit the invoice so that we can get the money out the door. So I'm sitting here waiting, like checking my mailbox, waiting to, you know, to like sprint it over to the, to the bank. And I apologize. That was totally my oversight. I submitted that today and hopefully we will see that, uh, we'll see that check appearing uh, soon. So Jeremy, I have be... a question. Yes, go ahead, Frank. Is that like the CARES Act where all of this has to be done by December 31st? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. And that's why, so Tim's contract, for example, goes through December. Um, the fixed wireless study that we already contracted uh, Fred to do, that's part of it there. There's some miscellaneous, um, miscellaneous funds that we'll need to account for. And we provide a, uh, provide a monthly report back to um, public service department to let them know what we're spending it on and where we are. Um, and then whatever is not spent like December, I think we can get the last $10,000 on December 15th with us, you know, essentially showing that we've spent all of the rest of it. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all got to get out the door by the end of the year. So, so we could buy a spool of fiber and store it at Greg's house. <laughs> Sadly, sadly, no. I mean, we, we, we could, but we would have to find some other money for that because that was not among the, the line items that, uh, that was put in that, uh, was put in that request. It's, it's, it's a nice idea, though. Maybe we'll keep it at your house. I volunteer um, my house if it'll help. <laughs> okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll just make sure to put the first server racks and networking equipment at your place, Jeremy. Hey, as long um, as it gets me service, I'm happy. 
Sure. Uh, well, one of the other things that I think that Lee and I will do, uh, probably uh, Lee and I and Phil and you, Jeremy, as, uh, as the executive committee, we will sit down and we need to put together um, we need to get put together a budget for next year because we will need to get that approved at our next meeting. Um, or I'll try to we'll try to get it out as soon as possible. I think we need to have it approved at the next meeting so that it can go out to the various towns um, and get any of their feedback, and then we'll have a second reading after we get <clears throat> town feedback. And uh, just as a refresher for new folks, our fiscal year is January 1st to December 31st. So we're passing a budget for starting in January. So we anticipated that we were gonna be spending a lot more money this year on last year's budget. So we're gonna need to go back to last year, sort of uh, wedge it into the proper format. Um, now that we're probably going to be having a much more robust line item format and we're borrowing uh, EC Fiber's um, budget line items uh, to start with, but we will likely have to have some additional ones probably to account for uh, wireless infrastructure in addition to, wire, to wired infrastructure. Otherwise it should be rather similar. So if there are wants, desires, uh, needs, things that you that you think definitely 100% have to be in next year's budget. Not that we have the funding for it, mind you, but um, if you think that there are such things, then please let one of us know and we will make sure that we uh, at least write the numbers down again and until we get you know a loan or a bigger grant or something else there's not really there's not really funding for it but we're, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants there all right any other questions financial stuff <laughs> michael uh first of all i i knew that you needed to submit an invoice and i'm really sorry i didn't tell you um and I have a question, and that is, does that mean since we haven't received any of that hundred thousand, that Brett is still waiting to be paid? So he's he's been paid ten thousand dollars, and I went and I followed up. So I sent an email. What I was on the twenty fourth of August, I think it was. We haven't been paid for the broadband innovation grant business plan yet. We're still waiting on that thirty thousand dollars. So I went and I worded the, the email more strongly that like we have, so this is their failure, you know, to give us our accounts receivable is preventing us from, you know, delivering on our accounts payable. And I said, we are, we're, we're in a bad situation right now and we need to kind of get this going. So um, this, that was sent to Todd Ziegler and uh, Clay Purvis. So um, I, I will be personally calling Clay tomorrow because we need, 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 need to get that rolling. So have they approved the business plan or we haven't heard that yet either? I, th I, I mean, I think they approved the business plan, but I do not have any formal communication saying, yes, your business plan is approved. So that's what I'm trying to pin Clay down about. So the moment we hear that it's approved, we should write an invoice, just like for this other no, one. No, 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 no. The invoice is already written. It's all been okay. submit, submitted already. They have my invoice, but they have the invoice that I wrote back in August, back when it was a like okay. a week after a week after we get the deliverables from Fred, we I, they submitted them. So there's an invoice in there. Fred's invoice is in there. The business plan is in there, and then they got hit by all of these other requirements, and we just fell off their radar or something. That's my best guess. Okay. So thanks. So. You know, if we need to, you know, get, uh, you know, protest signs and go march down around Clay's house or something like that, I know where he lives, so we can, uh, maybe we'll have to do that, but hopefully not. <laughs> so th thank you for that, Michael. Uh, any, any other questions, financial items? Okay, moving along. Yeah, I, this is looking like a rather short meeting. Uh, let's see, grant and funding update. David, do uh, you have any, anything to update or anything you want to talk about with regard to that? Muted. You're muted. Um, I don't have a lot to report right now. I mean, I know the Senate is considering, you know, a $2 million appropriation for CUDS to use 
for matching for Vita money. And the House recommended one and a half million instead of the two million that the governor asked for. And I know they're probably going to be voting this week or the end, uh, early next week on that. And um, I have not heard back from my communication with um, the Vermont Community Fund. Um, but I think there's something going on with them and public service departments. So maybe that's why I haven't heard back. Um, and that's all I know on the grant side of things. Okay. Thanks for that. So I, I had a conversation with the Vermont Community Fund too, probably not as recently as you did, David, but um, they said that they have some money set aside and that if there are specific things mm. for planning or whatever that we would like to request from them, we can put that together, but we're talking not not the big capital expenses that we're looking at. So if we, we could probably request another 10,000 like they just gave us kind of out of the blue. If we had a, something um, that we needed to spend that on, it sounds like we could probably get that if we asked for it, but we would need to have a specific a specific ask for that. Um, still waiting on the wireless, um, the wireless project thing. I don't know, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're gonna have to move pretty quickly. Um, I don't know what's keeping it th at that point. Um, and then for the, yeah, that $2 million, the, so for those of you that watched the House uh, Energy and Tech Committee, so Chair Briglin's proposal was to take the $2 million that the governor appropriated for CUDs and essentially stick it in an account somewhere. Um, there would be very few CUDs ready to use that for the matching funds for quite some time. So Tim Briglin suggested that we put less of that money into the fund because it's really just going to be CV fiber that's going to be tapping that, um, maybe the kingdom, and uh, revisiting the funding for the other CUDs, the other CUD matching funds for next year. The other, the other twist with this is that the Vita money, there's only $8 million in that Vita money, that pot. So if we went, so and already there's a couple hundred thousand that have already been um, spoken for. Um, <laughs> so if we go for $4 million and the kingdom goes for roughly $4 million, it's done. The program is, is tapped out and they may not offer more. So but we kind of mentioned to the legislature that it might be good to bulk that up a bit, Michael. I, I thought it was $11.8 million, not eight. I I would have to go back and look. I thought that the cap on that was eight. I think the cap was no more than four for any one application, but I believe the number was eleven point eight. I can go back and look too. Okay. Yeah. If if you if you find out differently, that was the eight was the number that was tossed around. But but in any event, if it's eight or ten, you've got so rather than a maximum of two CUDs maxing out the four million ish, we're talking about three CUDs, and we've got what nine now. Um, and all of them are saying, yeah, we're building next year, which, which is, it, it's, it's a nice idea, but I'm not sure aside from the kingdom and from us and EC fiber, obviously that I don't think that any of them are probably really ready to pull the trigger on any construction and engineering just yet. Um, and so, um, we'll talk about the poll audit and the, the pitch for that in, in a second, but that, uh, yeah, and then the pitch by Tim Briglin was uh, to reduce um, to reduce the amount of, of the money that the governor appropriated to 1.5 million. So that would still probably work as a 10% match for three CUDs and then another 1.5 million for doing a, a poll audit or as they call it as a uh, FX Flynn from EC Fiber called it a poll harvest because it's harvest season and you know autumn metaphors are very Vermont. Jeremy? Yeah, I was just wondering if that uh, Vermont Community Foundation 10K could be used towards a poll audit. Uh, yeah, I think we could probably make that justification. Um, I think it's going to be far more than $10,000, but could we use that? To, to get us part way there or you know take a get us a step um count that as some matching funds if that's part of a the planning bit pre-engineering engineering poll engineering, auditing in the project mm -hmm. I, I think 
I think so. That's that's probably a a sensible ask, and maybe they'll they'd be willing to give us a a, a bit more if we're showing them that you know we're going to be shovel ready before long. I mean, if, if, if you said we had matching funds tomorrow, we'd be hopefully applying for the Vita funds by the end of the week and moving hopefully yeah. quite quickly on that. Greg? Yeah, so uh, spending money on a poll lot, it will really help firm up a budget for construction. So that, that would be the case for uh, that with the community foundation. It would allow us to really firm up our construction budget. So um, while we're talking about that, so let's move on to the next, um, let's um, move on to the poll audit discussion, the next agenda item. And so this was pitched by EC Fiber. And EC Fiber asked, uh, essentially asked the legislature, would you, would you appropriate $3 million of the um, COVID recovery money to essentially do have a statewide effort to go and do some of the poll, th these poll audits for these like imminently buildable um, C CUD fiber projects. And as I understand it, it's, it's got some legs. And so it very well might be, um, that might be funded. And so, so as we're talking about this and as with matching funds, I'm wondering because, and I, I, don't, I would have to look back at our, um, at our budget proposal, how much of our budget proposal for the four million-ish project was um, was poll audit? And as poll audit, do poll audits don't come to ten percent of our overall price of our project, do they? No. Okay. So it's about sixty for the phase one project. It was about sixty thousand bucks. Sixty thousand. Okay. So. But if that could be counted as that sixty thousand is spoken for, because the state's paying for it over here out of this bucket, um, and if then we get you know pre-engineering support from the Vermont Community Fund, then we're at seventy thousand. And so then even if we don't necessarily get the um, the state support for the matching funds, then that's a a bit easier of a number to reach. So just a just a thought. So yeah, I mean, there's there seems to be some um, there seems to be some movement for the state using the COVID money to pay for the poll audit, which would happen before we would probably be doing the whole um, pre-engineering, engineering, and such. Um, so update the financial spreadsheet to account for grant funding. There is actually a line item in the spreadsheet where if we have costs that are borne by somebody else, we can um, we can just add that. So rather than changing the cost or zeroing out the cost, we can just count that as a grant amount. There's, it's right on the first tab, as, as I recall. Um, and right now, I think there's a hundred thousand dollars in there from the um, that we were anticipating, but we hadn't gotten at that point. So if we get sixty thousand dollars in poll audit, we can just up that to one sixty. Or if there's you know three hundred thousand dollars in support, five hundred thousand dollars in support for the matching funds, then we can put those in there, <clears throat> excuse me, we can put those in there as well. And that way we don't have to rejigger all the different parts of the, um, the spreadsheet. And that should, uh, should make that cost flow, I'm sorry, that uh, cash flow positive number look really quite good and probably will, will allow us to deal with slightly lower, um, slightly lower take rates if need be, or for that matter, slightly lower, um, Per subscriber cost, per subscriber fees, but that's that's a decision we'll have to make once we kind of know the final um, ins and outs. All right. Any um, anything else about poll audits? Um, there's discussion of this on Thursday, Senate Finance. I didn't hear anybody running screaming saying this is a terrible idea. Everybody kind of acknowledged that this was something that would definitely help us move forward short term. Hey, can folks so, hear me? I can hear you, Nick. I just want to introduce myself brief, briefly and explain uh, why I'm sitting in on the meeting. Uh, along with a couple other Vermonters, I've recently put together a venture called Last Mile Community Connections. And we're interested in exactly this, this piece of it, the poll audit or the poll survey. 
um, I've been working with a couple of different data options and apps, and we, I think we have a method we put together that sort of models itself after, say, the VPIRG canvas in the summer, where we would be working with underemployed or unemployed Vermont folks in the renewable industry, linemen, uh, people like that with experience canvassing, experience with the utility grid. Um, and so we are actively putting proposals together, um, but very interested in picking up a piece of this data collection work and uh, it is my understanding that there's not another um, in-state vendor that has boots on the ground i am i'm familiar with fx's proposal and some out-of-state folks uh, but i just want to introduce myself as a point of contact as you're figuring out that next step i certainly would appreciate the opportunity to discuss it further and put in our best offer for this work which is really interesting to me and i come from a renewable background a utility background and a, a campaign canvas background so this sort of struck me as a nexus to my skill sets and a, a, a gap that needs filling quickly so i'm i'm excited to delve into this and think we have a method that's going to work real well cool thank you very much nick so you know if we weren't relying on on the state to do, essentially do this for us um the plan is and i imagine the state's going to do this too um is that we would put this out to bid you know, it's a big enough project, sixty thousand dollars ish, um, that we would put this out to bid, and there and there would be other folks, um, including Nick's group, that would be looking to to come in and bid on this as well. So, um, when we get to that point, if we are a decision maker, if we're you know able to select a vendor, then we'll be putting it out to bid, and we'll have a open selection process like any other municipality would. Uh, any other any other thoughts about? Um, Poll auditing. Okay, it's gonna be an early night, folks. I like, like the sound of that. All right, um, so um, meeting with Peter Welch next Wednesday. So um, there is some interest at the federal level, apparently, and I'm gonna go see if I can pull up the invitation. Um, he is going to provide an overview of federal broadband initiatives. Um, and asking for each of the communications union districts to provide a statement or reflections, and then there's going to be some Q and A at the end. The um, and so Tim is signed up for that. Uh, I'm signed up for that. David, I don't know if if you signed up for it as well. <laughs> I will be signing up. Okay. So um, can you circulate the link for the sign up? Uh, yes, I can, and they are they are totally okay with members of the public joining this as well. Um, I think he will be posting a link. Um, he'll be posting a link to um, the meeting on his website, uh, but I can yeah I can post that. Um, so let's see. I think um, I think this is it. Hold on. They've asked uh, only one speaker from each communications union district to um, to speak. Um, I'm happy to hand the reins off to to Tim or David if either of you want to do that. If there's any specific message that we'd like to that we'd like to give, um, I've I've been to these before. I'm happy to talk and you know explain where we are, what we're doing. But I think David is capable of that as well. Any any other any thoughts about how we should proceed? Okay. Whoever you are, caller for, I can hear some some noise. Kind of distorted. Okay. If if anybody yeah. has it, the people who can attend this thing and have your own ideas or bullet points you want to bring up, if you want to send them to me and Tim and Jeremy for that matter. Uh, please do so. Yeah, Siobhan? I just wanted to, so if I remember correctly, the, the, like the very first meeting that I joined us on, um, I had talked about what it would take to make the internet a public good and a utility rather than what it is right now. And I, as I recall, I, my memory's a little hazy on this. As I recall, somebody said it had been declared not a utility by the FCC, explicitly declared not a utility. If anything has shown us that it really is a utility, it's been this last six months. And so that's, 
a point that I think, I don't know where this needs to be made, but possibly to our state representative, this is a, a, an appropriate point to be making because if it has to be decided at the federal level, then we need federal pushes on this, I think. Um, but yeah, it that that I think all of this other stuff is really great, but if we don't make this a public utility that gets regulated as a utility, it we're just gonna keep running into this stuff and spinning our tires on a lot of things. And so, to back up what Siobhan said, I can live without a damn telephone. I can't live without the internet. I'm doing my job from home. <laughs> and so so it'd be it'd be worthwhile watching the Senate finance meeting this Thursday because you're going to have representatives from the various heavy hitters talking to our state folks and probably making some similar arguments as you might hear them make at the federal level as well. Um, I, I seem to remember, Siobhan, that actually um, Representative Welch has made public statements. I mean, you can probably dig through press releases or something on his website. Um, I'm pretty sure he has used those words where, where the, what you just said, I think he would get behind that. There's a difference between lone Vermont congressman, you know, and then the rest of the you know, 400 and change colleagues down there. If, if we could get everybody behind that, that would be, that'd be in, incredible. And wh whoever talks, if it's me or David or Tim or whoever it is, um, I think we can, we can definitely bring that up. I have a, a kind of a uh, administrative point. If you're intending to uh, go to this meeting, I need you to send me an email. You need to send me an email because if there's 10 of you going, 10 of us going, I need to warn it as a meeting. So if we're all going to be there, uh, we're, we're not going to have an agenda item. Um, you'll probably hear us talk, but but for because I see you raise your hand there, Henry and David. I know you're going to be there. Tim, I'm sorry you you don't count in the math, but uh, uh, if you're intending on going, just please shoot me a message and saying I'm pl I'm planning on going to the the Welch meeting, and I will warn it. Um, I will warn it and make sure that we um, we're following the open meetings law. So. So real, what time was that meeting again? I'm sorry, I missed that. Uh, standby. Uh, I don't know that I Are said you it's Wednesday. About the finance meeting or 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 not? Which which the pub? No. Yeah. Peter so, Welch's so, so, meeting. Is okay. September 16th. Yeah, Wednesday, September 16th at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. to 11:45. Yeah, no, and I don't even know about that. So yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, b b because we are passive receivers of the Senate finance meeting on Thursday afternoon. That's that's. I, what, I, yeah, we, we th thankfully do, don't have to warn it if we're all in the same YouTube channel at, at any one okay. time. That that would be terrifying. All right. So if you're planning on going on Wednesday, September 16th, between 11 and 11:45, um, then yeah, please uh, please shoot me a message, and then I will tally up the responses and make sure that we warn this and we're all following the rules. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Um, approval of August 18th and 25th minutes. I'm going to move that we approve the August 18th, 2020 and the August 25th, 2020 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Okay, seconded by David. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or that want a roll call? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, before we do roundtable, um, do we need to have a meeting in two weeks on September 22nd? Do we want to do like an early, you want to do like a budget meeting? I don't know that I have anything else aside from if we get the wireless funds, do we want to plan on September 22nd? Okay, so th thumbs up if you think we ought to schedule this. I mean, I can just schedule it too. So thumbs up if you think we ought to schedule it. Thumbs down if you think you don't want to schedule it. We should have it on the calendar because the it, it's so short. The timing is so quick. Okay. Okay, so I, I see enough thumbs up. That would be, um, all right, so let's, let's plan on doing that. So to so meet two weeks from now. All right, and that will likely be a short one too. Hopefully we'll have, um, we'll just whip together a draft budget, probably mostly based on this year's budget. 
and we'll get going with that. Um, okay, so um, roundtable, we'll start. I'm going to go through my people list. Uh, Alan Gilbert? I'm good, thanks. All right, uh, Andy Gilbert? I'm good as well, thank you. Chuck? I would just like to say a heartfelt, heartfelt welcome to Tim. Uh, we are really looking forward to seeing how much faster we can move with your support. So thank you for joining us on this ride. Thank you. Look forward to it. All right, David? I just want to say um, I'm catching up with some things I should have been doing a month ago. I'm updating the data for Washington and Duxbury so that we have a complete set of data for all the towns. So that should be done by next week. And I and I guess I'm passing it on to Fred. Did we hire Fred to do an update? We've we've not we've not approved that um, okay. th that okay. actual update yet. I mean, um, I, I think we approved the money, but we didn't actually task him with that yet. And I'm kind of reluctant okay. to task him with anything before we actually have money in the bank. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if 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 he just wants to do it out of the goodness of his own heart for right now, or if he really trusting that we're going to get the checks then yeah maybe we can move on of that but um all right uh frank all good all right thanks frank uh greg i want to say uh, welcome board tim and let's all hope we get that wireless award okay henry great okay um i wanted to just ask a couple questions um I'm a little technical okay um so it was great testimony last week um i was really impressed with all the speakers including our own jeremy um i was wondering if this uh vita money for the seed money for the big VITA grants if there were any other VITA requirements. Like I know they had three years of books, but you have three years of books, but were there any others? Okay. We, we, um, we, do, not, we do not have three years of books. Oh. Is, well, so no. audited financials. So so we we only started getting a little bit of money in at the, at the very end of 2018. And we didn't really spend any money until the beginning of this year. So um, we will hopefully be, oh, actually that, and that brings up a good question. Uh, Greg, any word on uh, Batch Elder? Uh, no, I need to follow up. I had in the past, but she's been uh, not responding. So I'll <laughs> give her one more shot. So I will um, do that tomorrow. Thank you very much. So the, um, I'm gonna just gonna paste the link to the uh, broadband loan broadband expansion loan program document at Vita. Um, and if you click on the application for download at that link, it's, it's the green button right towards the top. That's something that um, that uh, David and I have asked Tim to take a look at and essentially start making sure that we have those um, all of the, the moving parts starting to get those lined up. Um, the spreadsheet that we got from Fred is going to get us partway there, um, but it needs to be massaged and we need to make some decisions that we haven't made yet. So I know I made those, made that sort of annoying false start where I asked you to commit to something and nobody was ready to commit to it quite yet, but uh, we're gonna have to do that as soon as we know that we're gonna go forward with this, so. So you had other questions, Henry? Um, yeah, and another, well, that kind of leads into one of my other questions, which was priorities for Tim. Have you defined a list of priorities for Tim to work on uh, after he's acquainted, done his research or whatever? Yeah, so for right now, I mean, there's, I think it's a bit of a learning holding pattern because we don't have funding for for any of this stuff. So as much as we can get our paperwork together and be ready to to execute the the Vita loan and be ready to execute um, like contracts and builds and understanding how the um, the wireless project is going to work practically speaking, um, these are the sorts of things that um, 
that I've, I mean, that I personally have come up with. If there are other things that you think uh, Tim needs to know or that think you think Tim ought to be doing, if you would send those to David uh, and or I, and so we can then um, collect all those and make sure that we, we prioritize those, Tim. But I would respectfully ask that you don't just aim your email directly at Tim and say, hey, Tim, go do this. Yeah, that's just going to be, yeah, well, 20 different yeah, requests. Yeah, so to follow on, one other thing I wanted to mention was that um, it's important to start defining the broadband needs for CV fiber for the RDOF um, auction and and getting ready for that because that's coming right up in October. So I assume the business development committee will deal with that. Um, but I just wanted to mention it here and it may be something you want Tim to become familiar with as well. Um, so th that was not uh, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, the last um, thing is that I just completed uh, Duxbury broadband needs assessment and um, I'm going to share that with you. It has some kind of a uh, little bit more detail related to broadband needs in terms of uh, use cases, I guess is the best way to say it. So, um, and I assume that that kind of thing is what we want to be uh, incorporating uh, for the RDOF um, needs as well. Um, so like kind of those two fit in with each other. Uh, what are, how are we gonna put that case together um, for the future? Um, and I think that's it, yeah. Yes, so if, if you could share those with me and David and Tim, Henry, I think that would be um, in, enlightening for me. Um, and I think that everybody else that's involved with actually putting together, you know, whatever documentation we have for, for RDOF when that comes down the pike, um, you know, we'll obviously be able to use that then. And, all, and also for that matter, using that in conjunction with the, um, the business plan and a, a yeah. accounting, accounting for the, the road miles and the take rates and whatnot um, for Duxbury as, as well as Washington. So I think, David, then the work that you're doing with that will also probably be pretty crucial to putting that together. Good stuff. There's one, oh, there was one last thing, which is more kind of off the wall. I'm sure you guys already thought of this, but um, when we did the um, the Wi-Fi proposal, um, did we consider television or radio antennas? um in as potential uh locations for wi-fi for for the fixed wireless project yeah the fixed wireless yeah, yeah. yeah the, the all the existing towers were, were considered um okay um thank you yeah uh let's see jeremy okay so he's gonna Sorry. pause for a minute Oh, go just, ahead. Oh, I, I was just finishing up trying to type up the notes real quick. Um, yeah, so just a little bit on the line extensions. I haven't, we, we responded to the second round. I haven't heard anything more from uh, from DeHart about anything. Oh, right. um, so hopefully we hear soon. Uh, it's, yeah, getting down to the wire and there was there's a lot of back and forth on that because they gave us minimal information and then we, we responded and then they gave us more information and we had to decide what anyway um the other thing is welcome tim glad you're here and look forward to getting this going and also i would be curious uh if there is any update on RDOF maybe for the next meeting i don't know if we need to do that now but i'd just be curious of where WEC is in that and maybe if we have a sense of how they are, how they're considering it. So yeah, so so the the, the tricky bit about RDOF is that we can't really talk about it in open session. True. How about bid, bidding strategies and that sort of thing. So we have to be su super careful. Um, 
you know, I, I, I think we could have an update with WEC. I mean, does that make sense? WEC liaisons and folks who have talked with them, does it make sense to like have them in at our next meeting? Would that be valuable? Or maybe I should ask, do you think um, they would? I, it, it can't get anywhere close to RDOF. And so I would say it's premature. There are going to be some things that would be good to present to the board, but I don't think in the next two weeks we'll be there. Okay. Um, I think we could start probably with the development committee first. And even, I think it depends on what meetings we have. Um, I think there's going to be a meeting later this week with uh, the consortium. I forget, I'll have to look at my calendar again. And that may lead to a place where we're going to report to the board, but um, but we're not, but we can't report in open session about RDOF anyhow. So the only thing we can talk about is general kinds of trends towards an agreement with WEC. And at this point, we don't have one. Okay. Thank you. And they, they just um, they just had a survey um, that I got. Uh, I got um, yeah. yeah. That 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 is pursuant to their feasibility study being run by NRTC, who is the consultant doing that. And I haven't actually looked at their survey, but it, it I don't unless there's some questions in there. Um, referencing the CUD, I don't think it's relevant to us at this point. No, it, it was basically the, the it, it was just to gauge interest, as far as I could tell. Questions like, if fiber came by your house, how likely would you be to buy it? How much do you pay for service? How much would you be willing to pay? Those types of questions, um, you know, kind of like David's survey, but less in depth. Yeah, it's interesting that they fair. called out price points. Like, if, if it costs this much, would you go for it? Which I thought was an interesting way to go. Which are really yeah. important questions for WEC to know. So, if if you if you're a WEC, if you're in the WEC service area and you have the opportunity to answer that survey, please do. Yep, totally did. Have. Everybody does. And sent it around to Facebook Plainfield people and. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so uh, Jerry, you're up next. Yeah, I, I just want to say uh, really briefly, first of all, thank you to everybody that's on the call today. We seem to have distilled ourselves down to a fairly small group of regulars, which is an absolutely wonderful thing, uh, but we really need to maintain a quorum of which I don't count unless Jeremy doesn't show up. But it's 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 really important that we persist. We have to persist. We are getting close. There are very few of us on the screen right now, and we can't let up. We've got to keep moving forward. We're going to be farther along on the learning curve. There's going to be really important decisions coming up, and folks are going to be jumping in that haven't been on the call for three months. And we need to be prepared for that, and we need to persist. And thank you everybody for doing that. That's that's all. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, John Russell. You there, John? I see you're unmuted now. Now he's muted. Okay, and he's back muted again. All right, we'll come back to you if we uh, if you need to. We'll wait for a spot for you at the end. Uh, Josh, uh, I'm all set. Thank you. Thanks, Josh, uh, Lee, anything else to add? Okay, Michael. Uh, two things. First, um, I'm very glad that Tim is with us, and I'm looking forward to working with him, as we've already started actually. Um, Secondly, on the issue of um, whether broadband falls under Title I or Title II of the Telecommunications Act of 1996, 
that issue has been to the Supreme Court and um, it's it's for us um, I mean it, it's important to have passion but it, for us it's a waste of our energy to be chasing after that issue um, we need to be working within the rules that exist now and um, there are people in Washington who are fighting to change that and it's certainly good to support them but going to the legislature and, and making pleas are um, uh, can will be unproductive because the legislature has no position in, in relation to the jurisdiction even if they send even if the legislature were to send a, a resolution to the US Congress that would basically have no bearing so I urge us to, to stick uh, working on what we can get done within the framework that exists, whether we like it or not. So, I so I, I think, I, I, Michael, I think that came up in the context of us meeting with Peter Welch next week and reiterating sure. to him that it makes sense at his level to get behind um, making internet access a public good, changing its designation. It's, it's just been, it's just been litigated for the last, 12 years and so is, I, it, is, I understand that what elected the issue do? yeah so, so we you, say is that what elected officials do we go and we tell them this is what we want go figure it out sure <laughs> as we've seen the uh, supreme court is uh, not really the end of this stuff because <laughs> of all the stuff that uh, keeps being relitigated so yeah, I'm it's it's fine, it it's fine if that's what you want to spend your energy on. I just recommend that we focus on what we can really get done. But if but if you disagree, by all means, go for it. All right, thanks, Michael. Uh, Phil, uh, I really don't have anything. I just want to echo others who welcomed uh, Tim. We've not met. Uh, yet, <laughs> except through this medium, but I'm sure we will uh, shortly. And um, yeah, I'm I'm good. All right, thanks, Phil. Uh, Ray. Oh, uh, Ray from Northfield. Welcome, Tim. I uh, feel like we're going to get some real traction now. Hopefully, we'll hear about the wireless uh, application and funding in the next week or so. Uh, while we sort out what the priorities are with regard to orange, blue, yellow, green, uh, which fiber things we're going to go after. With regard to the feed at Vita loan, we're only going to spend a million dollars, a million and a half maybe next year, out of what might be $4 million. So I don't see why they'd give us $4 million, we're only going to spend about a million and a half. Um, but uh, perhaps we can get some traction on that as well. But the next thing that we have to get our arms around is what are the priorities? One, two, three, orange, yellow, green. Uh, we need to figure out what that's going to be. And I want to make sure that uh, Tim is also a part of that conversation. I, I didn't hear the end part that what was part of the conversation, Ray? That Tim was also part of that oh, conversation. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Siobhan? Just saying, you know, taking a couple of minutes to ask our federal legislators to support something isn't a lot of energy expenditure i wasn't thinking that we should you know like great resolutions or anything i'm just saying if we've got an ear we should whisper in it um otherwise welcome tim and uh go cuds <laughs> thank you uh tim shea you are you're up next if you have anything you want to add before we adjourn uh, no, no, uh, just again, uh, thanks for the vote of confidence and look forward to working with you all and um, appreciate uh, all that you've done thus far to, to get uh, Central Vermont to where it is today. All right. Thanks, Tim and Tim Sullivan. Uh, hi, I just wanted to uh, also welcome Tim Shea. Um, excited to uh, have somebody uh, helping and leading uh, um, our efforts here. A um, few of the things I just wanted to either ask or mention was if I know we did a uh, August uh, kind of update uh, copy text uh, so that we could put in um, the uh, 
front porch forum or to our town select boards. Um, I would hope and like to see if we could somehow maybe do one of these once a month. It doesn't have to be as long as what we had composed and therefore edited and re-edited a few times. It just needs to be kind of like a short, sweet thing that our select board could uh, have a factual wrap their hands around knowing that there's, there's some sort of progress and they don't forget about the things going on here. Um, two, and you, Jeremy, you can uh, talk about that later and we could decide that uh, a different time or whatever. Um, but much like Henry, I was about to um, go after trying to do a, a needs assessment, whatever we want to call it. Um, I wanted to try and ask, uh, Roxbury isn't that big. We probably have about 300 households out of, out of 600 people in total. I was going to try and get um, a needs assessment as far as um, who they were, where they were located, uh, dress-wise. Um, maybe uh, encourage them to use something like fast.com or speedtest.net to, to kind of get an up and a download speed, uh, maybe a few on average throughout the day, um, and kind of report back their speeds and their um, enthusiasm if a fiber came to their door or a fixed wireless came to their door, um, how likely are they to buy into it if the average price I think we were talking about was like 70 to $80. Um, and maybe maybe every everybody could do that as well if they had the, the means to. I know Roxbury is small, so it's easy for me um, and I could maybe get results in a few weeks out of this and maybe others would trickle in afterwards. Um, I would, uh, I know we're meeting, I think in two weeks, we just agreed, we just agreed upon, but um, I would think um, we do that more often, like if instead of having the, the optional meeting, especially with Tim Shea coming on board, I know for me being new, the more meetings help fill in the blanks for me, and I'm sure that would for Tim Shea as well. Um, and then I noticed a lot of emails had come through maybe just like within the last hour or two before the meeting and I was rushing to get home to get on the meeting. So I never got a chance to actually see them, but I know they're sitting out there. Um, I was hoping maybe we could establish a protocol that maybe all these emails that come last minute. I know, I know sometimes it's because you're busy, Jeremy, as well but maybe a six hour window before the meeting would be helpful for us to digest uh, what's email just in case they were very important or not. And that's, that's all I got. Okay, so if we can tackle these in reverse order. Um, <laughs> if uh, Tim, if you would work with David and Henry to do that needs assessment, but I would also point out that because you came in late, you weren't here when we sent out town-wide surveys. And I, I've actually, I spent a lot of time in your town clerk's office um, talking to Tammy and down at the general store, um, you know, the, down at the general store, he, um, he forced people that showed up in the store to fill out our survey. So, yes, um, <laughs> yes. and he was, uh, he was uh, essential to getting um, the, the responses that we got in. And Roxbury um, was one of those that because John was not actively going and soliciting those surveys, it was me. So I'd get done with work in Northfield and I'd go down and talk to Tammy or I'd go down to the general store. And uh, yeah, and then I hand entered all of the physical like paper surveys that were in there that people didn't fill in online. We, we have a lot of that data. We have those addresses, we have those people. Um, and That'd so, be great. David, so, yeah. So, David, if you could share that with Tim, maybe, and then yeah. once we have the, uh, you know, what what Henry put together, if you wanted to supplement that at all, Tim, I think that's a worthwhile effort. Yeah, yeah I, I just sent it. This. I just sent okay. it to him. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. I've been in that store a number of times, but the the owner proprietor never presented anything like that. So, well, it's no. So, so this is something that that we did. Um, when, when did we finish that? January, February? January. Yeah. I, yeah so January twenty fourth. There you go. So, so, so I finished. Um, you know, I would. I took them down. I think November, December, and then you know, fo followed up a couple times. So, so yeah. So so unless you happen to be be here in the over the winter and popped in there in, in January, he he probably didn't have anything. Yeah. Well, we're up there quite a bit in the winter. 
we like okay. it. We like the winter more than the summer. <laughs> so, so, so next next time you're over there, you can certainly talk to him about uh, about broadband, and he is he is an advocate. Let me tell you, I I, I, I completely forget his name, but yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I talk to him every <laughs> time. <laughs> Henry, thank you, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I I just wanted to say in general, um, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Um, and there's two basic surveys that we have that we need to merge. David's survey regarding you know um, uh, people's uh, price points and all that stuff um, is one thing, and then the needs assessment around the broadband needs defined by the federal government, you know, telehealth, telework, and telelearning, those needs, they need to be all kind of combined into one survey. And Dave and I talked about this, um, we didn't have the timing for it, but we combine that into one survey, then we can send it out to everybody and do a refresh for the business plan if that's, you know, um, not too much work. But um, we need to get the needs assessment out to all the member towns as soon as possible for the RDOF stuff. And um, so I, I think um, th that we should do that um, as a blanket thing, you know, but not, you know, review what I have and add to it or whatever, or right. take away from it. Thanks, Henry. And then going to your first question, Tim, Chuck, you want to address that about the updates? Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. And that is something uh, the communications committee will run with. Thank so you. Ap appreciate that very much. And then, yeah, and when, when you get, when the communications committee finishes with that, then they can send it to the whole governing board. And then each of us in our individual towns can shoot that out through whatever means make sure that select boards from porch forum facebook etc cetera, etc cetera, make sure that everybody knows oh, where we are yeah yeah i mean there's not much to update that's different from what we posted the last time so um okay um who do i have left uh tom you have the last word oh i'm good <laughs> thanks <laughs> all right short and sweet all right so i move that we adjourn and so we are adjourned have a wonderful night, everybody. We had a short one. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.